Uh, okay, so Docker is a platform that provides an isolated environment within the host operating system to run and deploy your application. What does it mean that uh, it is not a final application, that's why it is a platform. Uh, you need to build a containers on top of it. And also, uh, what the purpose it serves is provides an isolated environment, just like your hypervisor does. Uh, but it does within the same host operating system. Uh, and that's the benefit of uh, Docker. So what Docker promises that uh, they can provide you a multiple isolated environment without uh, uh, the cost of uh, running a full virtual machine, without the overhead of full virtual machines. And that's the great advantage of Docker because you can spin up a lot more containers than uh, what number of virtual machines uh, when you have uh, some hardware or bare metal you have. Okay. Uh, so this isolated environment is called containers and Docker provides a disposable environment. That means uh, uh, you can create a container, you can destroy it within a minutes, you can recreate it. Uh, it's like uh, you are playing uh, with the isolated environment like anything. Yeah. So so that's the advantage of, uh, great advantage of Docker. So since it uh, provides the isolated environment, it separates your uh, code from the infrastructure. So developer only need to worry about uh, their code, their API, their, their functionality. Don't worry about the infrastructure once it has been set up. Why it is that? Because in the in Docker scenario, uh, we used to ship uh, images or containers uh, from the test to staging to production. Uh, so if the image is working on one environment, it is going to work in the other environment also. Previously, what used to happen that uh, uh, due to environment configuration difference, uh, uh, there were some issue, uh, some issues, some or other issues pops up. And what we de developer or tester used to do that we used to match the environment configuration also. These all problems gone with the containers uh, technology because we are shipping not only the code but along with the your images also. So if the images and the code has been tested out, uh, it, it it is guaranteed to work uh, at least the configuration part. Uh, or the, the container part uh, on the staging or in the production or any other environment. Okay, so the so it, it that means it works in the one develop, deployment environment. It will work going to work in the other deployment environment. So that's why it saves a lot of time uh, configuring different different environments also because you do, you don't need to configure the environment. You have the images. You just run the images. You have the your container work up and running. Uh, you don't uh, need any manual intervention uh, to start uh, to do all the configuration to spin up our operating system and to install your uh, required uh, application SDK just like you have a Java application. Uh, you can uh, you require JDK, you have a Python application, you require Python SDK. Uh, so these all problems has gone because uh, all things are built up inside Docker images. So that's the advantages uh, so so what 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 does we achieve that in us we achieve the faster deployment so it's, it's like the, from testing to staging to production the all the movement become very faster okay we don't we don't have to reconfigure because we have changes some configuration of the test environment uh, because it's some api requires something to add on we don't have to worry about all the stuff One question. I mean, it's like, uh, what's the? I mean, it's like, uh, why we use Docker instead of uh, this Chef and uh, Puppet and, and all? Instead of that, why we will use Docker? And how Docker, is it different from? The, uh, yeah, yeah. Let me explain. Docker and Chef are complete two different uh, identities. Docker provides a containerized environment. What Chef does, uh, it uh, it automates your deployment. Uh, so. So Chef is used to deploy your containers. That's the uh, or and heavily used to deploy your containers. So these are your query. So you you are deploying uh, you are deploying uh, uh, Docker containers using Chef, or you can deploy any any application on a, any machine so where the Chef client is installed. You can deploy applications. So, then, so it's, it's not uh, 
good idea to compare Docker and Ceph. You can compare Docker with uh, hypervisors like, like VMware because they do, both provide the isolated environment and you can you know, take that what the advantages, what the disadvantages. But uh, but it's like comparing Ceph with Docker is like you are comparing Apple with Oranges. Because Ceph, what Ceph does so or what... It means it, like, like it will provide only the OS part, right? Docker? For the uh, Docker, Docker provides... Docker provide your OS environment, uh, your uh, your what the SDK that is required that will also be provided by Docker because you build the images on uh, as per your requirement, and and what your application will be deployed on top of the images, and and that's where the complete containers comes. Okay. Okay. So images are the blue the blueprint of the containers. These are the are the static files. That is the blueprint. When so what are the containers? Pardon? What is the difference between containers and Docker? I didn't get your question. So what is the difference? Let me take the question later because uh, Kubernetes and Docker. Yeah. So this is the last question I'm taking because I have a lot to cover because we have two sessions already one I have to cover in one. Uh, so this is the last question. Uh, Kubernetes is the uh, or Docker orchestration engine or any container orchestration engine. So it's like that. it manages the container. So for example, you have a production environment and you have uh, hundreds of containers running on multiple uh, nodes. How will you manage it? How will you get to know that which uh, which one got, got crashed? Uh, what is the entry point for each uh, container? Uh, what are the service uh, that provides? So, what Kubernetes, uh, in a single word, if in a single sentence, if I want to define Kubernetes, that it, it man maintains, monitors your container. Okay. Let me go ahead. So, so the question will arise why even the Docker has. Uh, some and uh, it's like uh, how, what is the uh, historical uh, region or how how come it suddenly starts uh, develop complete develop starts popping up uh, for the last uh, seven to eight years. So we will go back something uh, some years around two, between 2000 to 2010. Uh, I started my career in 2006, uh, uh, so I have some idea of waterfall model also. So what happens that it was a very scalar model. It's, uh, it's like uh, you do, you do the development, it takes uh, one month time. You do the testing, it will take uh, two, two weeks, three weeks. Then it will, it's getting delivered to the client uh, uh, for the acceptance testing. And if for all process, uh, the acceptance testing has some defect, it goes back again to a developer. Uh, developer fix it out and then again goes to the testers. And it's like the complete cycle is taking lots of time. So that's a waterfall model, complete from the design to develop to test to. Uh, to go to the production or acceptance testing, whatever you say that. Okay, uh, but the problem with waterfall model is that uh, it ha happens many times that the customer is not uh, aware of what's going on in the developer environment. I mean, when they see the final product, they say that okay, this mismatch with my requirement. I, I didn't expect this one. I expect this one. So that was lots of rework that starts happening with the waterfall model, and uh, and to avoid that. We came with the agile methodology. I mean, agile methodology is like uh, within a two weeks or within a one sprint, uh, whatever sprint you can, you uh, decide uh, a project decides. You do all the stuff. Uh, we take a small module. We do all the stuff from the development, uh, from design to development to test and to deliver. So, uh, so client is customer is seeing uh, what the progress very very. Fast in the number of frequencies very great about that. and that's uh, more sync with the what the customer wants or what the uh, deliverers are. Okay, so so but agile methodology has one problem. Uh, it's like uh, you change some configuration on the test. You have to do the same change on the staging. You have to change do the same changes on the production. Yeah, there are lots of configuration issues that uh, takes in the waterfall model. It happens once. In the agile methodology, because every two couple of weeks uh, we are uh, spawning a new module, new functionality that requires some add-ons to your uh, already been deployed environment. Uh, so and that requires a retesting of it. So there comes a problem that uh, 
it's very difficult to handle in a couple of weeks or or a three weeks sprint. So so the DevOps culture starts growing. And it's like it's not like that we term point immediately at DevOps. They started automating the stuff. So what we can automate? Uh, so we can automate uh, uh, the deployment. So uh, whenever the build happens, uh, so they were the first thing starts. Uh, I think it started with Team City, the one of the first uh, DevOps stuff that it was started with the nightly build. Uh, now now we have used to see that uh, uh, even if you commit a code in the GitHub or in, uh, the Jenkins starts building automatically and do the testing immediately. So they advantage that you you pre know that uh, they issue with the code. They at least from at least from the unit test perspective, or they not issue. And if they issue, which change set has that issue? And and this is the advantage. So so we have a lesser defect when that when it, when it goes to testing phase. Now the build happens. When the build happens, then there comes tools like safe first safe and stable, and other tools are also there. Which automatically starts deploying uh, your build into your test environment and do a thorough testing. It's like uh, automated testing, uh, some level of testing, automated testing, and start doing that testing. While the development is going on, uh, the test team start uh, writing automated test cases for end-to-end test cases for that. That's called integrated testing. So it started doing the integrated testing. So that's why uh, these days, when you, if you are test folks, uh, you the automation is now mandatory. Uh, so that happens. So start, so uh, so that's this way. DevOps culture starts growing. Then comes the containers. Also, uh, we don't want uh, uh, the stuff to have the DevOps culture. We don't want the stuff uh, in different environment configurations. We want to spawn that environment very fast. Uh, we don't need want to take days to spawn up the new environments or change configuration. And that all does automation through Docker. Okay. So Docker fits in the deployment and configuration both. Okay. So if you compare the containers versus hypervisor, uh, you can take any hypervisor, either Oracle hypervisor or VMware hypervisor. Uh, if, if, you, if you find that there is no case open the system in the containers, and that is the one of the advantage that it is spawning a isolated environment without the overhead of uh, spawning of uh, overhead of full virtual machines. So this is the one of the greatest advantage of Docker. Apart from that, uh, other advantage are very quick to deploy, very quick to spawn, very quick to destroy. If, if you want to spawn a virtual machine, it takes hours. Uh, it takes very, you can spawn in a couple of minutes, of, uh, uh, load the image and do a container deployment. Okay. So that's, that's the difference between the virtual machines and, and the containers. Okay. Uh, so just like I told that, uh, uh, because there is a performance issue with hypervisor because uh, the virtual machine is consuming the own CPU and memory, and their overheads uh, that Docker uh, promises to avoid that, and it, it is doing that. Okay, and uh, there is installation time uptime is also uh, like. And what container do is the OS level virtualization because it mimics the OS and provides the multiple isolated environment. What hypervisors do is is the actual virtualization with uh, and with the on the hardware level, not on the OS level. Okay, uh, I think that uh, we have covered, I've already discussed most of the stuff here, uh, so so I can skip these uh, slides. Okay, uh, in Docker we can because we can spawn a container, uh, uh, so the idea starts coming that why don't we break our monolithic application into multiple microservices? That means uh, I I have one application and uh, I have web UI. Uh, web server also application servers, but uh, I I want if I break it I can decouple it and I I, I can decouple it I can deploy as an independent component. Uh, so I have to manage it as an independent one. So so every time the deployment comes I don't have to redeploy the complete application I have to deploy a component of it, and each component has been deployed separately as a microservices. And as I already discussed that it provides HA and load balancing also. So. So that's a, 
now I will start with uh, uh, Docker installation steps. Uh, I will spawn up uh, my virtual machine. I have already have spawned up. So I will start the steps and then we can see. Uh, unable to hear you. Yeah, no, I I, uh, I, I, I was just looking at my putty screen. Yeah, I, I just okay. that. Okay. Okay, I will not go through the installation because Docker is already installed uh, here. But I will tell the steps because we have a limited time also. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so I'm installing. I, these steps are installation of Docker on sent OS, but you can choose your own virtual machines, one own different uh, flavors of operating system. Uh, most of the stuff uh, are, will be the same, so you have to uh, update your current package, which you can do it uh, in CentOS. I can do it in Yum Check update. Then you have to up, uh, start installing the Docker. So there are a couple of ways to do that. Either you can uh, get uh, the FSSL from get Docker dot com and and pass it as a script, and you can start the installation. Another way is to download the RPM. And do the RPM installation uh, with the steps. It's a linear step simple step. RPM hyphen IVH and your RP, RPM. Uh, you can uh, you can choose uh, according to your play, different flavors. I choose the same choice because of the reason. Uh, in, because in the production environment, it's uh, most of the operating systems used to be a Red Hat, and CentOS uh, is like uh, and Red Hat works similarly. Okay. Uh, then the next step is that you have to start uh, your Docker service. Uh, the command is uh, uh, system cuttle uh, start Docker. Is is the, is the same command we start on any services, like network services or whatever service on a, on a Linux uh, host. Okay. And the next next step is uh, uh, you, you can see the status. That if you check the status, you you, you can see something like this. Uh, mm, that uh, if your application is running, you can say it, it can say that active running. Okay, you can see in the in my screen that it is saying active running. Okay, uh, then you have to in enable uh, the Docker. Uh, you can do that because if you re restart your host machines, uh, Docker will aut automatically start if you enable uh, the Docker service. And that's a generic uh, command to enable any services. Let me can enable other services also. Okay. Uh, I'm not showing the steps because uh, we have a limited time, but these steps are uh, oh, fine, and I, I will share the slides also. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so then I will start with the next session uh, because we have completed the two sessions before. Uh, so, so these are the steps to install our Docker on the machine. Now I have a Docker, uh, so I I need to understand the, some of the basics command on Docker. Let me. Okay, some of the basic commands you need to know that. Uh, so Docker PS will show that uh, whatever containers are running. So since it's a vanilla, I've just installed it. Uh, it's not run, no, none of the containers are running. Okay, so this is the container ID, and you will have the list of them. Docker PS hyphen A will show that uh, what all the containers that exist even running or stop container also. Okay. Docker images is the command that will show that what are the images that has been pulled or what are loaded in that in this host. So images contains your softwares. It's like you can have your uh, uh, images like uh, MySQL images. You can have your Java images. You can have your or Python images. So what happens that uh, the vendors, uh, the software vendors. It's their duty to create their Docker images if they want uh, uh, their, their software to be available on Docker. So they is to create a Docker images. They put it in on the Docker Hub. So Docker Hub is the place where all the software vendors used to put the images. And it's, it's like uh, there are almost uh, I think a million images will be there. Every for every version, you can have uh, your own images also. So you can search your own images, what you want to do, what images you want to use. Suppose I have a Java application. I've written a Java application. So I will use this Java images. Okay. So 
So I will go to this uh, Java images. Sorry. Okay. So this, uh, these are the open JDK images. Okay. So let's go through that. Uh, what does it mean? So this is the command. Uh, I selected that. This is the command uh, where if you want to pull the images to your host machine where Docker is installed. So if you want to pull it, you have to do Docker pull open JDK. This is the command. And this command is defined by the JDK uh, team. The, what, what is the syntax? Docker pull is a common command. And this uh, open JDK is that. So you, you can search uh, my SQL images also. You can search in any Python SDK also, whatever applications uh, that is required. Because you have to first select that your uh, images. Uh, but what this will do, this will uh, install the, your latest images. So how do we know that what is the latest images? So if you scroll down, uh, sorry, uh, if you have click on the view available tags, uh, so these are the different images uh, that, that are available. Okay. So these are different images that are available. So if you do the doc, Docker pull open JDK, it will always install your latest uh, images. You can select your operating system also, depend on, uh, because my, I have your, my Linux also, so I can do that my Linux also. And uh, it will change uh, the images also. So so I can select my latest images also. And if you want to go to uh, previous versions uh, also, you can select uh, this tag here. So what I need to do, Docker pull open JDK, and so I need to do docker pull when jdk colon and the tax. So I want the previous versions, not the latest one. I want jdk 8. So I, I, I can do uh, the whatever tax they have mentioned, I can put there. It will pull down that version of uh, jdk. So for, for example, the same app applies to uh, MySQL, Python, everything. If you only do this thing, it will always pull your latest uh, uh, images. You can also do the latest. It means the same thing. It doesn't uh, uh, matter that you, you put the current tag latest. Latest is the tag, uh, is the tag which, is, which is always there for every images. So they always move the latest tag uh, uh, latest tag to the latest release. So I uh, so if some vendor software vendors had released up to version nine and want to release the ten, so they will move the latest tag. They, they will detach the tag from nine and put the latest tag in the ten. So that's uh, they, that's every uh, verse. And this hub is the place where all the images are. Uh, so you can search any images. Okay. So so let me pull the latest uh, JDK images and let's see what happens. Okay, so just like it mentioned that using default tag latest and it start pulling it. So that means that it start downloading that images from the Docker Hub. It knows that whether Docker Hub is, it start, you don't need to do anything to configure your hub uh, and it starts to pulling the images from the hub. Okay, and it start downloading that images uh, from that uh, hub. Okay, it will take some time. Uh, so we can use these images and we can see that how we can create the containers on top of it. Okay, while the image is getting downloaded, uh, let me go to the slides and see that what are the other uh, other commands that we need to do. So docker run is a command uh, to check, uh, to start a container from the images, okay? Docker rm is a command uh, to delete a container. Docker logs is the command to see the logs. So you have to do Docker logs and the container ID. Uh, every everything in Docker RM you have to do the, the container. ID. Docker start is to start a stop container. So stop the container. You need to you need to do Docker start for that. Okay. And similarly, if the container is already running, you need to do Docker stop. Uh, Docker Docker restart is like like already running container. You want to restart it. If I can do that. Uh, Docker eject is the command where you can uh, log inside the container. So it's like a container you also they provide an isolated environment. You can go inside the isolated environment and you can do whatever you want. Okay. And Docker ps and ps hyphen a is the command uh, just like I saw that uh, to check that uh, the running containers. 
and the all containers ps hyphen is the for all containers these are the basic commands as we go progress we will see the other commands also okay uh, let me check the status it's still downloading so so after it will download it, this image is will be used to create a container so it's like a blueprint for that uh, uh, images okay 